Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Art Lounge Alley. I am going to continue for uh, from where I left off yesterday. And that is right here. So what you're looking at right now is um, it's going to be a new um, new idea, a new lesson, I guess. Uh, to just demonstrate how you can use an old model um, or a model for any other type of face that you want to create. So in this example, I started already working on 
this is going to be like the um, the foundation basically for all the other type of uh, faces that I'm going to be drawing using this as the basis for it. So as you could see, this guy has a mustache. It's, it's kind of an awkward uh, position for the head, but it's also fun. Something, um, something different. So I'm going to work on it a little bit more to define it. And then I'm going to show you guys uh, what you can do with it and how that's going to be really helpful for when you work from uh, imagination. Um, but part of the process requires for you to already have some sort of like an idea of like what you want to do, what kind of a character you want to create um, or something to uh, build on top of this, for example, and this being the model. So we have this going, this gentleman, as our foundation. And I'm gonna start with another character. So this is gonna be an older looking guy. And you guys are gonna notice how he is gonna slowly transform to like another looking character. While, this, while still having a resemblance to the original. So I'm still um, sticking to the pose. Same tilt of the head. And as always, I'm gonna keep it light and mark off areas for uh, the face features. Mark off points for the eyes, mark off points for the nose and the mouth as well. And remember, you want to just build little by little, layer um, your work on top, uh, on top of each other, rather than really committing like something that I used to do very often when, uh, when I was a beginner, when I was like really pushing myself uh, to draw better, um, I would get I wouldn't pay attention and I would get carried away with a certain detail. Like if something that I like and I wanted to shape it out more, I would sit and start focusing on it. Like let's say I would really want to develop the eye more. And then little by little I would just realize like, hey, I'm, I'm really going into detail and I'm starting to press really hard. And it's better not to get in that habit. You know, that's, you're going to get to that point. You know, you're going to get to that stage in a drawing. It's better that you teach yourself in the beginning this habit of having to first shape everything out. Um, and that just has so many benefits to it. Uh, it first of all, it makes, uh, makes sure that everything fits um, in the place that it's supposed to be in relationship to everything around it as well, rather than just focusing on one part and then realizing it, well, it's too big actually uh, in comparison to other features in a face or it's kind of skewed when it's supposed to be a little bit higher, a little bit lower, depending on whatever model that you're are working from or what, uh, what you're trying to establish from your imagination. Um, so it's just a really, it's a very helpful um, starting point. And then after you get everything placed where you want it to be, then you could start um, focusing a little bit more on certain areas and and this is really what the point of uh well one of the points rather of of this uh lesson is as you guys could see that i'm uh i'm starting out from scratch and building on top of it as a demonstration just to show 
uh, how beneficial that process is. And, and it's a, it's a fun, um, stage because everything is kind of loose. There is no need to really focus too much on anything. You're just, um, you're just layering things. You're just putting, layering on blocks. We'll go back to the idea of, um, building a building, for example, I would say it's more so like, um, you know, you're putting down the beams before you lay on the blocks. The blocks are more of like detail, I'm going to say. So this is your beam work right now. You're making sure that you're setting the parameters for all the bricks that you're going to be putting on top uh, of each other and making sure that everything is um, proportionate, that everything is angled and straight. You know, similar to the drawing, you want to make sure that you get your angle right, you get your um, perspective right, before you start layering on uh, the bricks. The detail. It's going to have a, a gnarly looking mustache, kind of like a train conductor. In the eighteen hundreds, or a bartender could be a bartender as well. One of those like Western bartenders. And this is also a great approach if you're intimidated um, by drawing from your imagination. Like your the question comes up of like, what do I draw? You know, where do I start? What do I do? Well, it's a perfect way to go about this. Like this example is to actually motivate you guys to try and do that uh, by using something that you already see. So it could be some pose that you like, it could be some sort of expression that you're into and you could um you could start from there you know rather than starting from complete scratch like no nothing blank blank paper blank canvas you're starting with somewhere you're you're um getting your toes wet you know you're trying to you're testing out the waters trying to see how things are uh, are gonna go and then before you know it you know your body's warmed up and you're ready to jump in that's kind of the same idea here. You know, you're um, you're testing the waters, you're sitting down, you're drawing, you're trying to see like, well, where do I go from there? What do I do with this and that, etc. And then before you know it, you're already, your hand is warmed up, you're into drawing and you're ready. And, uh, uh, and, and willing to, um, start pushing things to the next level, start coming up with ideas. And it might not even be that laborious. You know, a lot of times, um, as I mentioned, like the first, the biggest step to when it comes to drawing is sitting down and doing it. You know, ev everything prior is, um, it's just kind of the nerves, you know, oh, is it going to be, how's it going to come out? It might not even come out that great. I'm not really that good. You know, all those doubts start to creep in prior to that. And I'm gonna say it's just that capricious side of us, you know, the one that procrastinates, the one that doesn't want to do the things that really are beneficial, but they're challenging. They're, they put you uh, out of your comfort zone, you know, because it requires thought, it requires effort, it requires uh, diligence and focus and all that stuff. You know, so when your body's in like this comfort zone, your mind is in this comfort zone where none of that is really firing off. You're not thinking about any of that. You're just, you know, browsing on your phone or watching TV or something or doing something that's a little bit mindless. Of course, your mind is going to rebel and it's going to be like, but this is so comfortable. And, um, 
the difference between people who will get better and who won't are the ones who are going to push themselves past that, who are not going to give in to that state of mind. And they're going to be like, nope, I know once I sit down, I'm actually going to have a great time and I'm going to enjoy it. And at the end of it, I'm going to be grateful that I pushed myself out of my comfort zone and actually started doing something. And before you know it, you won't even want to stop. You know, you're going to be like, oh, I should have started this earlier in the day. But this is just like another way of, uh, you know, motivating yourself and being like, well, it doesn't have to be from complete from my imagination just yet. I could actually just um, use something as an example and then build from there, see what I could come up with. And a lot of times, I'm going to say from uh, my own experience and other artists that I spoke to, a lot of times um, you come up with ideas or you come up with designs or uh, character concepts or character features by accident, you know, by drawing, by sitting there and really getting into what you're doing and then like just paying attention to the lines that you make and recognizing, oh, I like this, you know, this kind of turned out pretty cool. And little by little, you could just, you know, build on top of that. Just the same way as you're building on top in this process. So it's just something that happens, you know, it just happens with uh, your effort of sitting down and just doing it. You know, all these other things start to pour in. Uh, making the experience really worthwhile. Starting to press just a little bit harder to see uh, how things are coming out. If you're doing it in stages of three, I think you're on the right track. You know, if you're starting out with the light sketch, then you're pressing just a little bit harder to see, uh, or to like pop out certain things and see if, if you like what you're seeing, to finalizing it and really um, giving your pencil work more weight, you know, pressing harder, defining things, finalizing them, better yet to say. Uh, then, yeah, you're doing great. You're picking up great principles. You're pick picking up really good habits. And remember, even if you're having a blast, right, and you're just like, oh, I'm having such a good time, I don't want to, I don't want to ruin this and start focusing that's when it's important to push yourself out of it because um you know you're setting yourself back to the old habit of getting into detail when really you should be making sure everything in the drawing is um, is in the right place you know is uh turn it out pretty good as far as anatomy goes as far as perspective goes as far as uh, the pose, the angle of the face or body, whatever. For me, um, yeah, I did the opposite. I actually started out by, you know, creating the outlines of somewhere and then building out from there, like starting out with the eye and then building the nose and then the mouth and then the chin according to the distance. Uh, but what I ended up, and I got good results, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get bad results or your drawing is going to look bad because you took that approach. It, it What I just ended up finding out over a period of time as the more like uh, the commissions that I got and the work that I got um, with deadlines 
is it's a lot faster to do it because of all those uh, steps that I was mentioning. You know, you're making sure all those things are there prior to putting in hours of work developing detail and, you know, uh, creating the character or whatever else. And then finding out like, hey, it's too, it's too big, you know, or too small or it's all the way to the left or all the way to the right. You know, with that approach of starting somewhere and building out from it, you don't know where you're going to, you might end up. You know, you might end up drawing features a little bit way too big. And then, you know, you spend so much time drawing out the detail in the eye that it's kind of a shame to just like scrap all that and start all over again because of that, that mistake. So you don't want to be caught up in that, uh, that decision, you know, that fork in the road where you're just like, hey, do I just erase all that detail and start all over again? Or do I try to like fix this or whatever else? You know, so um, I was like, oh, that makes sense. You know, this is why it's important to, to take this approach first. And it's something that I discovered more from just having to do all those commissions and having to do all that all that work um, that had deadlines, that had a time frame that I had to get everything done. So it's just a good habit to learn um, for sp speed sake. And also after a while, it just started to make more and more sense to me of like, besides just speed, you know, I just started to enjoy that process. I started to enjoy how I'm kind of building everything out. And, you know, that there are, there's a different vibe um, to each of those stages. Like there's a different vibe to sketching things out real quick and, you know, having this kind of free flowing um, experience when you're drawing, right? Um, part of the process. And then having to switch that a little bit, switch gears and then start to like define the features more and being like okay i like this or i need to like shift this a little bit and so on so it's like another mode it's a different uh, different process different uh point or period in in your drawing so it's it's kind of cool as opposed to just constantly from beginning to end working from detail to detail to detail to eventually building everything into one piece um i found that to be more exciting you know i liked that uh there were all these different stages it's kind of like i want to say for me personally it's like watching an action flick that's just non-stop action like after a while it's just like all right you know it gets kind of exhausting or it gets kind of boring um you, you kind of want to change a pace, right? So I found that that's what, that sort of provided a little bit, like. It, you don't burn out, you know, just sitting there and focusing. And sometimes, you know, spending so many hours for me, you know, I'm just gonna speak from my experience. Um, what ends up happening is that I end up obsessing too much because I'm in this detail mode so then I start really nitpicking just like every tiny little bit of thing it's just something that happens it's just you keep taking it to the next level to the next level so if I'm like in this like uh, detail oriented mode and I'm noticing all of these minute little things that I want to correct or uh, I want to improve and so on and so forth it just starts to consume my attention and I lose focus on like trying to get the rest of the drawing out you know or trying to focus on everything else that's around and then I just sp spend so much time working on that those little things it, it becomes like it's like an obsessive mode and um, I think this approach helps helps making sure that it doesn't uh, it doesn't happen too soon like it's fine once the drawing is really set, you know, and uh, you feel good and comfortable about where everything is, the pose, the expression, so on and so forth. Um, 
then I feel like it's no big deal. In fact, it's going to be more favorable. But everything prior, I feel like it needs... I need to, like, tone it down a little bit. So as you guys could see, there's still similarity, right? Um, there's that tilt of the angle, uh, the, the tilt of the head, the angle, um, the eyes, how the eyes are drawn. Like, all those little things, you could borrow from them. You know, you could be like, oh, okay, this kind of worked. Let me, uh, let me use that. You know, I liked, I liked how the nose turned out. Let me use that. And then changing that a little bit you know maybe not drawing it exactly as you see it in the original and then already you're you've transformed something uh, like that into something new you know by simply just changing up a couple of lines here and there it's like a helping hand right it's like it's making you think like it's not as bad as you think it is. Don't don't be too intimidated. Here's here's something that you could work off of. Here's something where you could start. You know, you could get your feet wet. And then your imagination is just going to take over and you're going to want to do this and that and be like, "Oh, maybe I could do maybe I'll add this line here." You know, it doesn't have to be exactly like that. And because that choice and that freedom is there, uh, you start becoming more adventurous with with those choices. And for me, at the moment, I'm very uh, focused on precision uh, because I just want to take my attention to detail to the next level, you know. And also, I feel like it's important to really care about every single part like when i'm drawing let's say conan the barbarian the comic book um i'm just noticing like how much uh john Buscema cares about every little part and i've i've mentioned that frequently like there's certain panels where the uh the panel is a zoomed out shot so the character is all the way at a distance you're getting to see like a panned out version of like what the environment is like, who's around, or whatever else. But despite that, he still spends a lot of time making sure, like, you could still see the detail. You could still see uh, some of the muscles, even. You know, and that's all anatomically correct. And you could see their eyes, even though they're tiny little dots, they're still proportional. They still make sense in their placement, you know. And uh, I just recently started following this other Instagram um, account that does um, retouching and they're like basically trying to bre bring back um, uh, old paintings you know so they're cracked and they're damaged and whatever else so the, the person working on it uh, just brings it back to life and it's pretty amazing actually it's a beautiful work um, it's pretty cool to know, like, what do they do exactly to get that result? Um, but I noticed in one of the paintings that he was, um, bringing back to life, like, the person who, I guess I'm gonna say, the person who painted the painting, um, they were doing a woman that was sitting in one of those, like, horse carriages. It was an old painting. Um, and just anatomically things were off about her you know you could see from a distance that like the arm is too big uh the hand is way too big the face didn't even have the right size eyes and mouth i mean the painting itself was pretty amazing you could see that the person is really good about paint uh, built uh, painting buildings painting animals and streets and so on and so forth but it, it was just i felt like um a rushed job Know, that the person was just like, oh, the implication of a person being in a carriage is good enough. And while that could work, you know, while that does have its place, where it's just like, just suggestive marks here and there, 
um, I feel like it's just an opportunity for you to be able to take your work and your skill to the next level is missed, you know, when it comes to that. So another thing that you could borrow from uh, from the drawing, from the original, is the light source. So for, for example, you just drew this out. This is uh, based on somebody who's sitting or a photo or whatever else. You could also take that light source and start uh, playing around with that. So don't be too scared to jump into drawing from your imagination. Just play around with stuff. You know, you have a sketchbook. That's what the sketchbook is for. It's for you to just experiment, you know, fail, suck at your work. But uh, every time you sit down and you do it and you push yourself, it's you're getting a step closer to getting better. It doesn't go in reverse. As long as you actually put the time and effort and you do try to experiment, you do try to like, you know, play with this and that and not chase the results, but really get, um, get involved in the process. And I noticed, you know, paintings that really have that, that quality, that element that I've mentioned frequently that, you know, being able to breathe life into the drawing really has to do with, I think, um, how involved the person is with the subject, how involved the artist is with the subject, how involved they are in the process. You know, they're not just like, oh, I want this to look, you know, the entire time they're drawing, they're just like, oh, I want this to be recognized as an amazing painting, or I want this person or people to be impressed by the results or whatever else, uh, you know, and thinking about everything after not really uh, being present, you know, and really paying attention to the subject and be, like marveling at all the different lines and um, that sort of thing. I think when you are in that mode, that's when it really comes out. You know, when you are really in, in love with the process and the drawing and um, and all that, I think that's when that element comes out. It's this like kind of not not conscious of thinking about the result. Like just really being in the moment with the drawing, with the subject and and doing your best with it. And for those of you who are new to have a better idea of what I'm talking about, I just want you to think back to any event in your life where you really were just totally um, in the moment of something. Like maybe you were watching some movie and then you didn't even realize that time really passed by, right? And uh, before you know it, you know, the movie ends or whatever else, and you're like, oh, that was such a good movie. You know, I want to say that's that's a pretty close um, experience to what it's like when, when you really are in love with the process, when you really are, um, you know, into the subject of whatever it is that you're drawing. That's the kind of sensation that you're going to get from it. You're going to be like, oh, wow, I didn't even realize time has passed. And I'm almost done with the drawing. Now you're just so caught up in the, the act, in the process, that everything kind of melts away. Time, expectations, you know, all these other thoughts, just not present. You know, you're just thinking about um, the drawing and just studying it. Or painting, whatever it is that you're working on. 
that's where you want to be. I want to say that's what's called being in a zone. So I'm little by little pushing harder and harder on the lines. So I'm not going to spend way too much time on them. Just wanted to give you guys, and I am enjoying it. Um, just trying to catch myself from really going into uh, into the zone, basically. Um, so I do want to give you guys more examples of this and just showing you another method. All right. So that's pretty much uh, that for that guy. Next, I'm gonna do another one. Starting out with the circle. Remember, whenever you are drawing, once you establish uh, the lines for the eyebrows or the lines for the eye, uh, the line for the eye, the guideline for the eye, everything else has to follow that. You'll never have like, uh, you know, the nose going this way or something while the eye line, the guideline for the eyes is going across this way. It has to be parallel, you know, so whatever the angle is, uh, it's, it's going to be parallel to all of them. So the mouth is going to be parallel to the line for the nose, for the eyes, etc. Just a really helpful tip to remember when it comes to these guides. And for those of you who are beginners, don't press hard when it comes to the stage. You know, I just want to um, reiterate that and bring that to the forefront. Um, of your memory 
that in this stage, it's all very light. You don't want to, uh, you don't want to start pressing hard on it. So get in the habit of sketching things out loosely um, and gain more control over the pencil in that state rather than being like, but I need to hold it and I need to hold uh, grip it real tight and I need to press harder because then it just seems like it's just too chaotic, you know. Uh, stay in that zone, stay in that mode and get more and more comfortable. That's how you get good at it. You know, there's no... There's no, it's not like one day you're just going to wake up and you're going to be like, oh, I could just sit down and easily start sketching things. It has to be uh, this building block process. using that middle line to line up with where the nose is and where that dip on the lip is, on the upper lip. That M shape. So as you, you guys may have noticed um, in this model or in this character, uh, he, the features are a lot more elongated. His neck, uh, neck is actually more narrow as opposed to this guy here. His face is stretched out, his nose is longer. But still the expression is very much similar. Um, the angle of the face is similar. Certain features are similar, like the eyes, for example. And a little details on the eyelids and so on and so forth. So it could be th simple things like that that you could borrow. You know, I really like how uh, the eyelids were drawn on there. So you, you draw that on the next character that you do. Thank you. 
really like um, the shape of the mouth and how that's coming out. like a, a turtleneck <laughs> like literally it looks like a turtleneck everything is kind of stretched out So as you guys could see, um, still maintaining certain things, like certain parts of the eye, and as I mentioned, there, there are little details uh, that I'm borrowing from each and every one of them. Like as I'm developing this character, I'm still focusing on some things here, as well as taking some things from um, features here, and just combining, mixing, matching things to uh, come up with different designs Distinguishing them from each other while at the same time uh, Maintaining some of the similarities So I'm gonna say up until this point a lot of it was just like sketching things out And I could start defining things a little bit more in this next stage. So it does look like I'm gonna have to end the stream in just a few minutes and get ready for the next stream, which is the project stream. And I'm pretty excited to show you guys the progress that I've made over the weekend uh, some points in the week, during the week, a little bit before I ended up getting sick for a couple of days. Um, but the results are looking pretty good. Like, I'm getting much, much closer to the next stage of coloring everything. I'm still in, um, the stage of, like, polishing things up in the, in the line work, in the pencil work. Um, feel like I can push it to the next level in certain areas. And um, this is going to be the last stream for the week. Um, as far as figure drawing basics go, as far as the project goes, and I'm going to be back on Monday for more uh, figure drawing basics. 
at the usual time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Right here at the Art Lounge Alley. So if you guys do enjoy the content, just remember to hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, they would both be uh, greatly appreciated by yours truly. It's going to help grow the stream, reach out to a wider audience. Um, and if you guys want to catch up on old episodes, you guys want to check out the special intros that I've had uh, throughout the uh, life of Art Lounge Alley. You guys can head over to the video section in the Twitch channel and uh, filter the videos based on collection. And over there, you'll see a folder for everything, including highlights, where all the special intros are. You guys can catch up on uh, the most recent one, which was the introduction of Gil Elvgren and all of his influences. Um, it's up to part three now, so there's going to be more uh, more parts to it. You know, still in the process of sh uh, introducing you guys all the influences that uh, he's had throughout the years uh, prior to him, like really venturing in into the pinup world, into uh, producing all the amazing work that he has throughout his entire career. Um, and I've yet to show you guys images within the book itself. You know, so far this has been just my uh, my research and collection of, of all the different artists that are mentioned. And I felt like it was important to actually show you guys and that way you guys can get a better, even a better understanding of where his influences come from. And just giving you a um, insight into that. You know, a lot of times you just see the work of the artist and you don't really know what happened prior as much. And I thought it would be fun to actually highlight that. Made some interesting discoveries about uh, the commonality between a lot of the artists where they studied uh, certain places that are still open to this day places that they studied that is um, and some of the work that we still see to this day like Quaker Oats you know that's something that uh, Sumblum um, created as well as like Cracker Jackbox that design Uh, the classic sand claws for Coca-Cola. That's also Sunblum's work. There's there's a lot that we see today that are still based on those artists of that time that time and period. So if you guys want to check that out, that's in the highlight section. Um, you guys could catch up. And part three is in the works. Going to be excited to talk about other artists as well showing you guys more of their work. All right, y'all, I'm going to take that five minute break and I will see you in just, uh, just a little bit for the project stream. Uh, thanks for tuning in everybody. I'll see you in just a few.